Hey yo, welcome to our channel today. What are some of your one night stand horror stories? Went to the kitchen in just my panties to grab a glass of water. I opened the fridge and peeked inside, only to hear a familiar voice behind me say, Miss Galore. I covered up as best I could with the rag hanging from the fridge handle and slowly turned around. It was one of my preschool students. I've only met his mom because his parents were separated and only spent some weekends with his dad. He was hungry, and I ended up making him some pancakes. I'd gone out with a few friends, promptly got wasted, and by some small miracle ended up going back to this fairly attractive girl's place. The morning after, she decides to soothe my hangover with a BJ but before proceeding, she says, you told me last night you don't really do one night stands. Hope you remember my name. I completely froze, bought some time by laughing, and through sheer luck, I noticed a picture frame with Amelia written on it in bold, colorful letters. Yeah, that was her sister's name, and she died the previous summer. And I did not get that BJ. I mean, this guy had the right idea, he just needed a little bit more luck to bring it home. Can't say that you didn't try, at least, and you had a very short amount of time to think on your feet. Next time, just throw that right back on the girl and see if she remembers your name. Two can play at that game. Went home with a girl and went to the bathroom naked. During the night, I couldn't remember what door I was in. I saw the bathroom light was on and peeked my head in, and it was her dad. I ran down the stairs to hear, what the fuck are you doing? I couldn't remember her name and just responded with, I came home with the girl. He must have had only one daughter and directed me to her room. The next morning, when she was about to drop me home, she introduced me to her parents. Her dad said, oh, I know who the fuck he is. I caught him walking around our house at 4 a.m. I had what I thought was going to be a one-night stand with a girl my sophomore year of college. Turns out she was pretty cool, but we went back to my dorm and banged for about an hour or two and both just passed out from exhaustion. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning because the bed shifted. When my eyes adjusted to the dark, I could see she was standing in the middle of the room and kind of whimpering. I said her name, what are you doing? She looked in my direction, let out another more audible whimper, and pissed all over the floor on my roommate's side. Luckily, this was the first weekend before school, and he was not there yet. Then she crawled back in bed with me. Now, I was pretty turned off, but we kept hooking up for a month or so so her friends wouldn't think I was an a-hole. I slowly started dropping little comments to make it seem like I was way more attached than I was, and she ended things with me. I got to be the sensitive, sexy dude in her friend's eyes and totally got out scot-free. I turned a horror story into one of my greatest feats. Well played, sir, well played. Had an okay hookup with a girl that said she worked in her father's auto garage. Everything went fine, and she wound up spending the night. I woke up the next morning, and she had snuck out, and I had a text that said, Why are there pictures of other girls on your phone? Of course, these were pictures of myself and friends, some of which are girls at bars and concerts. I thought to myself, Thank God she ditched me. I certainly don't want to hang out with a girl that will go through my phone while I'm asleep on the first date or ever. Later that day, I went to start my car. It won't start, and my mechanic said somebody had cut several wires for the ignition system. Guess she took her stuff. Was in Calgary in 2009 and went to a concert in Edmonton with this chick who was a friend. We were meeting her friend there, who I'd never met. The chick is smoking hot and seems cool. So before I know it, the second chick was under the impression that me and chick number one were an item, so chick one gets embarrassed when I confront her and leaves. Oh no, I'm stranded in Edmonton, and my ride is gone. So myself and chick number two hit it off and have a great night. We got pretty wasted, and we go back to her house she lives with her family, and we hit the couch and proceed to bang like bunnies. I woke up to cooking not 10 meters away. I'm naked on the floor of a kitchen or sitting room, and her mom is cooking. Luckily, I have a blanket covering my bits. Awkward chat with the mom, no clothes to be seen, and mom had washed my wet clothes. So I stayed there for three hours with a towel around me with a family of rednecks watching Knight Rider. Is there anybody else that also thinks that this actually sounds like a pretty cool and chill family? Nobody seemed to be phased by the naked stranger in their living room and were, in fact, very welcoming. Sounds like this guy got a home-cooked meal, his laundry done, and got to watch a kick-butt show like Knight Rider. Why, oh why, did you not marry this chick, dude? My first time was a one-night stand. The dirty was surprisingly decent. All credit to her. However, the girl had a latex allergy or something, so I didn't use a condom. I would have to be really unlucky to get an STD or baby from my first at bat, or at least this was my dumb logic. Fast forward a few weeks, and I was at the campus health center. Luckily, it cleared up with some antibiotics. Life lesson learned. Fast forward to about a year, and I get a friend request from the same girl. 
Her profile picture is her in a hospital with her newborn child. I almost had a heart attack and did some rapid Facebook sleuthing. The picture was posted the day after the kid was born, which was September. According to my phone's text records, I had done the deed with her in late March. 9 minus 3 equals 6, and that baby wasn't premature. I'm in the clear. Wait, that means she was when we were, oh. Well, the important thing is that it's not mine. Life lesson reinforced. Went out dancing at this rock club. I had never had a one-night stand and had been single for around six months after a very heavy breakup. I started dancing with this one guy who was an incredible dancer. I have a lot of respect for guys who dance without a care and are confident about it. So we chat a bit, and then my friend insists that we leave. So I start to, but then I decide to go back and ask for his number. But I can't find him. I look some more and tell my friend, just leave without me. At this point, I'm pretty drunk, and I find him. Turns out he was looking for me as well. We started making out pretty hard, and we catch a night bus, making out almost the entire way home. So once I get to his house, things get pretty hot and heavy. We bang, and I get up to smoke a cigarette as he's passing out. As I walk through his room, I start to notice things letters taped all over his bedroom wall and mirror, sign love you forever, Alex. There are also pictures of this girl named Alex all over the letters, too. There were a lot of letters and a lot of pictures. I shrug it off and figure maybe something happened to her. I came back for my cigarette and lie next to him. I notice the Alex tattoo on the back of his arm as he's sleeping. The next morning, he wakes up, and I ask him about Alex. He explains to me that it's his ex-girlfriend, that he's still in love with her, but he's happy he found me and is so happy to love someone new. I explain to him that I'm moving away in a month, and he's not in love with me, and we should not see each other again. Also, maybe not keep hanging those letters up. It kind of sucks because he was a really good lay. How much do you want to bet that Alex left this guy due to his clingy and overbearing behavior? Pretty high probability, I would say. But I give props to this girl for recognizing the signs and steering clear of this guy. Usually, it's a big red flag when the guy mentions he is in love after a drunken one-night stand after a rock show. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen, but nine times out of ten, that guy is going to be nothing more than a headache. Steer clear. A big tuna swim for open waters. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our story. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed what you heard, don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe for more captivating content. Your engagement fuels our passion, and we're grateful to have you on this journey with us. Stay tuned for more exciting stories and adventures.